What's up everybody, Tony here with iTech Check, and today we're going to be taking a look at an NVMe upgrade for our PS5. Now hopefully everybody's doing well, and I hope that everybody that wanted a PS5 this year was able to secure one. I know it was super hard. I've been trying to get one for the past year, and I was just able to get one. And if you're upgrading from a PS4, you're going to quickly realize that you're running out of space already on your brand new PS5. So not only did you spend four to five hundred dollars on a brand new PS5, but you're gonna have to spend more money to upgrade your storage, which is probably like around three hundred fifty dollars for a two terabyte and about one seventy ish for a one terabyte. Now that's for the Gen 4 that Sony recommends that you get, but I happen to have a Western Digital uh, 750 here, which is only a Gen 3, and it's a one terabyte, so it's a lot cheaper than the Gen 4s, and I was just curious to see if it will work in the PS5, because it'll save you a lot of money, especially if you already have one laying around. I also got this heatsink made by Sabret. It pretty much replaces that little uh, aluminum cover that goes over your NVMe and the PS5, so that should keep it nice and cool. So I will be showing you how to take the cover off, how to install the NVMe, and then we're gonna see if the Gen 3 will work at all. So let's go ahead and get started. So it's fairly easy to take the cover off of the PS5. All you need to do is flip it upside down so the disk drive is facing up here, and then simply lift up on the back cover of the PS5, and then just slide it over, and the cover comes off just like that. That I was telling you covers your NVMe drive. The Sir Brent heatsink will replace this. Then we also have our little Phillips head uh, screw down here that we just have to take off, and it, it will expose the NVMe port. Okay, so I just took the aluminum cover off of the slot here, and if you're using the Western Digital SN750, you're gonna see this little cylinder right here. You're gonna need to move that down to the 80 slot because that's how long the NVMe drive is, so we'll just move that down to here. Okay, so that's in place. Okay, so now we're gonna take our NVMe drive, and there's the little slot here. You're just gonna push this into place Make sure you line up everything uh, with the NVMe drive and just gently push it in. Then we'll go ahead and push our NVMe drive down. Make sure you line it up with the slot here. Then we'll take our screw and we'll just put that in to the little cylinder here and then just screw it in place. Now keep in mind you don't have to uh, put a lot of force into this screw. Just uh, make sure it's pretty much hand tight. You don't want to damage the NVMe. Okay, so once that's secured, we'll go ahead and take our Sabrent uh, heatsink that I got. Okay, and here is the Sabrent heatsink that I got. It pretty much replaces the aluminum cover that we have here. Uh, it does have a thermal pad on the bottom here. All you need to do is take off the sticker and then we'll install it into place. Okay, so it goes in just like this. It has a little lip on the end here that just goes into the little slot. And then we'll just put this down into place here. Then once that's down, we'll go ahead and take our screw that we originally took out and we'll put that there and then we'll just screw that into place. All right, so that is all installed. Let's go ahead and put our cover back on and then we'll hook up the PS5 and see if it works. Now to put our cover back on, all you need to do is do the reverse order. Again, have it uh, laying on the top and here is the disk drive. All you need to do is take the cover with the disk drive on the left-hand side here kind of put it on top and then just slide it uh, back to the right and you should hear a click. There you go. Okay, here we go. This is the first time I'm turning on the PS5 since we installed the NVMe. So here we go. Okay, so here is our answer. Unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to use the Gen 3 NVMe at all. It needs to be at least a Gen 4 with a capacity of 256 gigabytes up to a four terabyte maximum. So I am pretty bummed that the Gen 3 that I did have laying around did not work in the PS5. I was kind of hoping it would work at least, but I take a performance hit, of course, because it's not a Gen 4. Uh, rather than shelling out another $200 uh, for the one terabyte that does work on the PS5. But at least we both know now that you cannot use a Gen 3 at all. It needs to be a Gen 4 or greater, 256 gigs or higher, maximum of a 4 terabyte. 
Now, all isn't lost. If you happen to have an NVMe drive that doesn't work internally on the PS5, you can simply buy a USB enclosure for your NVMe drive, like the one I have here, and then just plug it into the USB port on the PS5, and then you can use it as an external storage. The only thing with that is if you use it as an external storage, you're only going to be able to utilize it with PS4 games. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to let you guys know when I put out new videos. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Later.